Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Five Rounds Podcast. The only podcast out there with the cardio for those deep water championship rounds. I am Mags and I have just finished watching UFC 266, the triple main event card from Las Vegas. And what a banger of a card it absolutely was. Let's quickly run through these uh, uh, prelims and early prelims. So we started the NAR in the featherweight division. Jonathan Pierce getting the second round sub over Omar Morales. Then we jumped to the welterweights where Matthew Semmelsberger got the first round KO in 15 seconds over Martin Sano. First decision of the night came in the middleweight division when Nick Maximoff got the got the rub against Cordy Brundage. And then the early prelims finished off with uh, Jaleen Turner getting the submission against Uros Medic in the in the lightweight division. Going into the uh, the featured prelims, the recorded prelims. Um, we started with Tally, uh, Tyler Santos getting the decision against Roxanne Modafferi. Uh, a second round knockout for Chris Dorcas against Shamil Abderrachmanov in the heavyweight division. Then, surprisingly, not even in the featured prelim spot, Dan Hooker got the decision against Nazra Hakparast. Um, Dan Hooker, who's headlined the, his last two events and is now on the prelims, but it is what it is. And then the, the last prelim was. <laughs> <laughs> an amazing fight. Uh, Marlon Morales taking on uh, Mirab Devashvili in the uh, bantamweight division. Uh, Morales trying to push for uh, a return to title contention. Absolutely emptied the the gas tank in the in the first round. Nearly put Mirab out. Mirab was uh, was jelly legged uh, for a lot of the round. But um, as I said, the gas gas tank went, and in the second round, uh, Mirab was able to to get the finish. Um, so going on to the main card now, and we actually started with uh, Jessica Andrade taking on Cynthia Calvillo in the women's flyweight division. And Jessica Andrade is looking to push for a title, picture, title shot. Uh, Cynthia Calvillo ranked number five in the world, looking to finally make that breakthrough to, uh, to title contention. Uh, unfortunately for Cynthia, she was absolutely dominated by uh, Jessica Andrade. Uh, Andrade spent the majority of the, the first round stalking uh, Calvillo, landing um, the, the shots uh, to close distance, uh, trading uh, really big punches with Calvillo. Uh, Calvillo's main uh, offense was was kind of like trying to keep uh, Jessica at bay with uh, with leg kicks and with uh, with body kicks, uh, punches down the middle. Uh, but Andrade uh, is so so good at evading her her opponent and getting in, in close and and doing that that dirty boxing uh, in a phone booth style fighting. And she was able to uh, to walk into. Um, Calvillo, uh, Cynthia Calvillo's uh, range uh, land some huge, huge shots, uh, taking shots on the way through. But that's the 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 sign of a great fighter when you're able to to do that and still be able to press the pace. Uh, landing some uh, big uppercuts. Uh, Calvillo did well to to defend and duck her and dodge her way out, um, but uh, eventually Calvillo gets her up against the fence. Uh, Andrade landing big lefts. Uh, Calvillo tried to to reset to the middle of the octagon, uh, but in, instead uh, Andrade is able to to close her back down. Uh, Gets Calvillo carrying against the fence. Herb Dean is is uh, warning Calvillo that that he will stop the fight, and with six seconds of the first round to go, he uh, he calls an end to it. Uh, Jessica Andrade picks up the victory. Uh, Cynthia Calvillo absolutely dev- devastated but dominated in that fight, and Jessica Andrade puts her, her name straight back in the in the uh, books for a title match. Next up, we go back to the heavyweight division with our uh, two top five fighters, uh, Curtis Blades taking on Jozinho Rosenstruik. Rosenstruik coming off the back of uh, that loss to uh, Cyril Gagne uh, in the, the interim title match. 
and um, if there's ever uh, a card that needs a turn in the punch ball, unfortunately this is that fight. Um, not a good fight to watch at all. Very slow, very plodding. Even in, even though uh, Curtis plays through well over a hundred strikes, it was just not a good fight. It was two fighters who have who are ex- excel in one certain mode of fighting. Uh, and are definitely afraid of the other one. Uh, Curtis Blades really good uh, at the uh, ground game. Uh, just seeing your absolutely terrifying on the feet. Um, and both were doing their level best to try and avoid the other one's uh, uh, arsenal, essentially. Uh, first round, very, very nervous. Didn't, it took quite a while for um, for any kind of uh, real offence to happen. Curtis Blades bouncing up on his feet. Uh, Jozinho had has that kind of uh, slow, lazy style that where he's looking for the big shots uh, and he landed in within this fight he landed quite a few big shots uh, even though he got off less than half of the strikes that that uh, Curtis Blades uh, threw he landed um, more significant strikes 31 to 25 um, but the difference was the the wrestling uh, Curtis Blades was able to uh, to get Rosa Streak down to the floor uh, a couple of times wasn't able to get the finish but was uh, certainly able to control Rosa Streak on 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 the floor uh the issue with with rosa street is when the fight was on the feet he was very gun shy again looking for that that one big knockout punch which he's become famous for uh but not really setting it up with uh with any of those kind of like 50 percent mid-level punches those like testing punches um and the 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 times he did hit he caused a lot of damage uh, Curtis Blades had a, a lot of uh, damage uh, around his eye, but the the difference was was the wrestling. He was able to get the takedown as and when he he needed it uh, all the way through the the three rounds. It was just a, a pity. It was such um, a slog to watch. Uh, really not as uh, not an exciting fight to 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 watch, but in the heavyweight division, especially at that that upper echelon, you have to do what you have to do to grind out a result. And Curtis Blades has become uh, a bit of an expert at grinding out those results. Uh, moves on to nine and three in his UFC career, uh, and he'll be looking to uh, to p- perhaps fill a slot uh, by um, someone who. Who may have done something pretty idiotic recently? We'll we'll get to that later on, uh, but he did call out that that person uh, for a potential match. Whether he'll get it uh, is another is another thing. So then after that, we got into the middle of the card, uh, the people's main event, uh, the the one fight on the card that was potentially a five rounder. But uh, with without a title belt being on the line, the return after nearly seven years away from the Octagon, uh, Nick Diaz taking on uh, old enemy Robbie Lawler, somebody we faced, uh, what, I think 17 years ago, something like that, a long, long time ago. And um, Robbie Lawler has, um, has got his win back. And uh, Nick Diaz has... <laughs> And this really hurts to say, uh, as a as a huge uh, Diaz brothers fan, I uh, really like the the passion that they they bring to the octagon and bring to to MMA in general. They they may not be the the sharpest tools in the drawer, I suppose, but uh, in terms of heart and and action, you aren't going to get uh, much more than this. But unfortunately, this felt like a Nick Diaz who was forced into a fight, whether that be through management. Uh, I know he's had complaints about his um, uh, his management team. He said uh, quite a, f- a number of times over the last few days um, about having issues with his uh, management and how he didn't re- really know how this fight was set up. He wasn't looking to make this fight. He didn't really want this fight. Um, he, he felt like a man forced into this position. We had the the very late switch uh, from welterweight to to middleweight, uh, meaning that perhaps Nick Diaz wasn't able to get down uh, to uh, to one seventy. Uh, it just felt like all the the signs were were there to say that 
this Nick Diaz wasn't the Nick Diaz that that we know from Strikeforce, wasn't the Nick Diaz that we, we know from the early days in, in the UFC with the uh, fights with GSP and BJ Penn and Carlos Condit. And it showed in, in the octagon, he he was quickly, quickly up against the cage. Uh, Robbie Lawler uh, was unleashing punches on him from, from the get-go. Uh, very much the, the quicker man. Um, Diaz looked slow. He looked laboured. Um, he eventually did kind of start getting to a little bit of, a, of his groove. Uh, tried to brawl, uh, but when he did... Uh, Lawler was able to chop the legs down uh, and and kind of gore Nick Diaz into into starting to flurry, um, but this was a very dominant uh, first couple of rounds for for Robbie Lawler able to um, absorb the 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 fairly weak shots from Nick Diaz. I mean Nick Diaz is known for those fifty uh, percent shots, but lots and lots of volume. We didn't get to see that today. Uh, we saw uh, a very laboured, slow Nick Diaz, um, a very uh, fast, um, energetic, kind of almost a renaissance for, for Robbie Lawler. Uh, again, through the uh, the second round, um, it was pretty much a lot of the same. Robbie Lawler was landing big, and big the bigger shots, landing the more diverse shots, uh, uh, landing knees. Uh, Nick Diaz uh, was very quick to, to cover up uh, and, and kind of turtle when, when Robbie Lawler was, was having his success. Um, Robbie Lawler was... He, he just seemed to be able to walk through the power of, of Nick Diaz. Um, nothing really seemed to, to phase him. And then in, in the third round, we see that, um, that Robbie Lawler drops uh, Nick Diaz. Um, he, Nick Diaz tries to goad, um, goad Robbie Lawler into, into coming in and, and wrestling uh, and grappling with him. Robbie Lawler's having none of it. Walks quite a distance away, uh, trying to G up the crowd at the same time. Uh, turns around and Nick Diaz is still on the floor. The referee, Jason Herzog, is, is imploring him to, to get back to his feet. Uh, Nick Diaz is having none of it. Um, and essentially the referee stops the fight. Uh, a, a sad way for some, a legend like Nick Diaz to go out. Uh, but the crowd absolutely still loved him. The MMA community absolutely still love him. Um, it's just a, a shame that it, it felt like that this wasn't the Nick Diaz that we all that we all appreciate, uh, and it's a, a sad way for for him to go out. So going into the first of our two title fights, this this one was uh, for the women's flyweight division. Uh, Bullet Shevchenko, Valentina taking on Lauren Murphy, and um, there was a reason why uh, Valentina was at eighteen to one on favorite um, because she was so so dominant. She's arguably the best women's fighter ever, not to be named. Amanda Nunes, uh, and in in terms of pound for pound, it's it's easy to make a case that she's perhaps the best in the world. And this fight did everything it needed to do to prove that she was very very patient with uh, Lauren Murphy. Lauren Murphy's had uh, uh, people uh, in her camp to uh, to try and emulate uh, Valentina Shevchenko, but I don't think there's many people who can can uh, bring the the arsenal that Valentina Shevchenko brings if she can't attack you with the kicks she'll uh, she'll throw the the punches if she can't attack you with the punches she'll she'll use her, her grappling she's one of the most well-rounded fighters uh, in the in in MMA in general not even in just in in the UFC and she just totally totally obliterated Lauren Murphy all the way through this fight uh, um, like I said, she started quite slow, but that's the, the Valentina Shevchenko where she tends to uh, try and gauge her opponent, uh, landing that, that beautiful uh, uh, leg kick um, jab combination that, that she does. Uh, started to pick up the pace um, around the middle of the first round, uh, landing some big, big shots, landing a spinning kick. Uh, spinning back fist. Um, Murphy's face started to, to get red pretty quickly. And then uh, when she tries to uh, power away into a clinch, Shevchenko just bullies her to the floor uh, and finishes the first round in top position. 
Second round uh, was was pretty much more of the same. Shevchenko uh, was was tagging the quick rats, uh, landing the, the takedowns, uh, able to to um, avoid the uh, the takedowns of, of Murphy. Murphy tried to get a couple of uh, uh, single legs and double legs, but was um, Shevchenko was able to just spin out and and get free, land land the big big punches again. And um, Murphy goes for a, a super Superman, almost kind of like a, a desperation move, uh, and then was clipped on the way through. Um, Shevchenko just seemed to be so laser focused that she was able to to just land pretty much everything that she she threw. Um, she gets um, um, Murphy back down to the floor. Murphy goes for for half guard, and Shevchenko is able to to try and isolate the arm. Uh, using that that really cool shoulder pressure that uh, she does to to pin her opponent to to the floor, and uh, again we end the second round as we did with the first with Shevchenko in top position landing some huge huge shots into the third round and and Lauren Murphy tried to uh, to kind of strike a little bit more, uh, but unfortunately for 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 Lauren that meant that uh, Shevchenko had more opportunities to to make contact with her, and she ended up with a a bust over her left eye. Um, and every time that she tried to to do something, um, Shevchenko was just popping that eye time and time again, landing big right hands, uh, kicks to the body. Uh, it was just a, a technical masterpiece from from uh, Shevchenko. She uh, doesn't uh, leave any room for error. She just um, is able to pick apart her opponents very much in the 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 uh, Weili Zhang uh, mold, the the mold that that beat uh, Joanna Jacek, where there was just no mistakes in her game whatsoever, and everything that Lauren Murphy tries to throw at. Uh, Valentina, Valentina has a, an answer for again a uh, very very dominant uh, third round going into the fourth round uh, and uh, it's almost uh, kind of getting tedious now but it, it starts with with Shevchenko taking the pace um, landing low kicks landing a right hand again that's a, a just a beautiful little combination uh, really kind of like throws her opponents off guard with the the stinging leg kick and then following it up with with the right hand uh, Murphy really proved that she had a lot of heart by uh, by being able to to stay in uh, and bang with with uh, Shevchenko for as long as she did uh, but unfortunately Tam was was certainly not on her side and Shevchenko was able to um to uh, get the the fight to the ground um essentially by throwing <laughs> by throwing Murphy to the floor uh, uh got into top position landing a few elbows uh Murphy did her best to to kind of like try and uh keep uh, Shevchenko tied up but Shevchenko just uh, pushes Murphy down lands more punches and then Keith Peterson comes in and waves this this fight off uh, an absolutely dominant performance and I just don't see anybody uh, outside of Amanda Nunes who can can hang with Valentina Shevchenko uh, um, a classy classy performance by a classy classy champion and now let's get into the main event, the featherweight title match, uh, Brian Ortega versus Alexander Volkanovsky. These two guys were captains of the, the Ultimate Fighter teams. A uh, lot of heat between the two, um, and it led to arguably one of the, the best fights that we'll see all year. Um, very, very great, uh, good fight to watch. Really, really exciting all the way through. Um, and a dominant performance in terms of, of the scores from the judges for, for Alexander Volkanovsky, but I think if you just look at the scores, it, it doesn't quite paint the full picture of the fight. Um, it's it's taking each round in, in isolation. You can certainly make the case that he won every single round. Uh, that I'm not, uh, I'm not dis- disputing at all. But I think when you look at a, a scorecard where it, it has uh, 49, 46, 50 45 and, and 50 44 that makes it look like he's been um absolutely dominant and 
that for me just it wasn't the full picture uh whilst he was absolutely superb on, on the feet uh his hands were 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 brilliant against uh brian ortega really kind of did a lot of damage ortega uh at the end of the fight he looked like the elephant man his, his face was all swollen up uh, Ortega did land his own shots. He did land some really good shots of his own, and and when it came to the the grappling, he was very dynamic uh, in terms of uh, locking in the the chokes and the submission moves. Uh, but I have to give uh, tip my hat to Volkanovski. Uh, there was a couple of times, especially in the third round, when he looked like he was in a lot of danger. Um, there was a, a point where Ortega had the body lock against the legs uh, and he had the, the guillotine trapped in and Volkanovski was, was flapping like a fish uh, who had been caught on the line. Uh, eventually, he, he slowed down the, slapping, the flapping, but you, it looked very, very tight, but Volkanovski was able to, to slip out and, and basically just keep his calm keep his composure uh and through throughout the the third fourth and fifth rounds there was a number of times where where volkanovsky uh was uh in in trouble he was uh locked up uh brian ortega's ground game is is uh one of the very very best in 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 the sport Uh, and he's very like i said very dynamic with the the moves he's able to to pull off and the submissions he's able to to lock in uh so for volkanovsky to uh be trapped uh several times in these uh in these submission moves and and keep his calm keep his breathing low and being able to uh to find ways of escaping these and then to dominate on the feet um volkanovsky is a great uh ambassador for that featherweight division uh, really um, really kind of put it on Brian Ortega but again like I said the scorecards don't reflect that how how good of a, an effort Brian Ortega put in this guy was was out in the third round uh, after after having those um, amazing efforts of submission he was um, he was pinned to uh, to the floor and Volkanovski was absolutely teeing off on him and we get to um to where Herb Dean is looking to finish the fight and the, the you've got one eye on the fight, one eye on the clock as the clock's ticking down, Ortega's getting absolutely wasted by uh, Volkanovski and it did look like as the as the klaxon went that, that Herb Dean had weighed the fight off with perhaps a second of the round to go but uh, the doctor comes in and we see um, he's, he's Herb has, has, didn't stop the fight, he allowed the fight to continue uh, the, the doctor did some rudimentary tests on his um, on his vision, and it looked like Ortega couldn't see. Um, um, Herb Dean tested his his eyes with uh, with uh, holding up fingers, and it looked like Ortega got it wrong a couple of times. But uh, but uh, Herb Dean <laughs> gave him multiple choice uh, multiple choice picks to to get the number out. Eventually, allowed the fight to go on, and we all thought that perhaps this was. This was just going to be a couple of seconds before um, Volkanovski comes in and waylays uh, with a with a huge uh, overhead ra- overhand right. But no, uh, it didn't happen. Volkanovski's heart uh, of a lion uh, really shone through. Uh, he actually uh, starts uh, basically regaining his his his, his momentum. Scores uh, scores a trip. Is able to trap Volkanovski again in a, a, a topside uh, guillotine, uh, but Volkanovski is able to to slip out, land ground and pound. Uh, when it gets back to the feet, Volkanovski is is able to um, land bigger, bigger shots. Ortega still did did his um, did a lot of work on the on on the feet. Was still able to land some of his own own shots. And going into the fifth again, we get a, a, an inspector who comes in to check on Ortega again. Ortega says, "No, nope, I'm I'm ready. I'm raring to go." Um, and the fifth round was was the epitome of this fight. Uh, Volkanovski with with a great stand up, and Brian Ortega looking to to take the fight to the ground. But unfortunately, he's not successful uh, in doing that in this round, and we spend the majority all all the all of this round uh, on the feet, standing and banging. And uh, Volkanovski really did the um, 
he did land the bigger shots. There was a, a point where Volkanovski was um, was off balance after uh, Ortega caught a low kick, but he was able to quickly recover and was just landing uh, some huge, huge shots. Uh, Ortega was uh, was was slipping the, some of them and, and and landing big shots of his own. Um, but unfortunately, the the time was certainly running out. And Volkanovski just uh, did what he had to do, stay out of trouble. Um, was able to actually throw uh, a flying knee, which uh, didn't quite make contact. Uh, they, they start a brawl with the last 15 seconds to go. Um, as the klaxon went, we see uh, one last shot by Volkanovski, and the fight is, is over. We go to the judges, and as I said, the judges give it 49 46, 50 45, and 50 44 to. Uh, Unanimous winner and Alexander Volkanovsky, a, a, a fair victory, but like I said, there was uh, more to that fight than actually meets the eye. So, after such an amazing uh, card, such an amazing uh, set of fights, um, the UFC it ain't stopping. So, next week we've got another banger of a, of a, a, a card, a fight night. Tiago Santos taking on Johnny Walker, clash of the light heavyweight Brazilians. And again, it's another card that's absolutely stacked. So, we're opening the, the prelims with Alejandro Perez. Uh, we've got Betch Corriere on the prelims. Uh, we've got Antonina Shevchenko taking on Casey O'Neill in the prelims. Uh, Casey O'Neill still unbeaten, so that'll be a very interesting fight. And then the the main card, we've got Aspen Lad taking on Macy Kears on both of those uh, young, hungry uh, women looking to, to push in the banterweight division. We've got Misha Shirkinoff taking on Christoph Jotko in the middleweight division. Um, Alex Cowboy Oliveira taking on Nico Price, Kevin Holland versus Kyle Dorcas, and then obviously that that main event, uh, Tiago Santos and Johnny Walker looking to uh, rubber stamp their uh, position in the live way uh, title contentions uh, scene, I suppose. Uh, so definitely tune in for for uh, five rounds next week for that. Definitely go and check out the the rest of the content on these uh, amazing networks that Five Rounds is uh, is proud to be a part of. Uh, that's Visionaries Global Media. That's uh, the Chair Shot, and that's also Radio Techers. I am Mags. You can follow me on Twitter at Podfather Mags. You can follow my absent co-host and son, uh, Carlos at Kurtbit underscore Carlos, and you can follow the show at Five Rounds Pod on all your social medias. Uh, thank you all for listening, and that is the end.